Hello and welcome to the first Grasshopper tutorial. I'm going to go ahead and close out of Grasshopper right now just to show you that all you have to do is type in Grasshopper into the main command line of Rhino and there pops up Grasshopper. Basically this tutorial is just going to cover the user interface of Grasshopper. So I'm just going to go ahead and just start right out with the uh, main menu bar up here. It's basically the, basically the exact same as any other Windows program. You've got your uh, file tab with all the open documents, save document, etc. I really don't look into this a whole lot. If you want to explore it a little bit, feel free. If you have any questions, I'm sure one of us can figure it out and, and let you know anything you need to know about the main menu bar. But basically it's just a standby, the old standby, just a regular menu bar for a Windows application. So let's go ahead and get to the meat and bones of Grasshopper, which is basically this components panel. It has every tool that you will need to use in Grasshopper is included in this components panel. So basically if you want to use anything in here all you have to do is click it, drag it onto your screen and there you have the tool that you want just by clicking and dragging. So we can go ahead and delete that. Uh, also as opposed to looking for your tool or whatever component you're trying to find in these tabs you can also double click on the canvas this area right here is what is known as the canvas if you just double click it'll say enter a search word and it basically works similar to the rhino command line it will if you type in something like say I'm gonna type in line if I start typing in line it will basically come up with all kinds of components that are related to the li uh, characters so basically you can find components easier I, I use this probably three quarters of the time and I use the components panel probably 25 percent of the time so it's whatever you choose um, some people find it easier to find things up here some people find it easier just to type in some words and explore a little bit it's totally up to you so basically now that we've kind of understand where the tools are, uh, I'm going to go ahead and explain a little bit, a little bit about how uh, components and parameters work. Basically, there are two objects you need to concern yourself initially with Grasshopper, and that is parameters and components. I'm going to go ahead and pull a parameter onto the screen right here. This is called a parameter because it stores data. Basically, you're going to put in values, numerical values or boolean values, which I'm not expecting you to understand what a boolean is yet, but if you know rhinoceros at all, you, you probably are familiar with the term at least. But basically it stores values and if we can grab a component, let's say a, let's go ahead and pull the circle out here. A component performs actions on the data stored in a parameter. So, again, Grasshopper is a little bit intimidating to begin with, uh, so don't expect to understand everything that I'm talking about right now, but hopefully you can go through this and then continue through the tutorials and then come back to this and understand exactly what I'm saying. So I'm just going to show you a little bit. I'm going to go ahead and put a, a point in Rhinoceros, and then I'm going to go ahead and store the data of that point in this parameter component. So I'm going to say set right click on the parameter, set one point. Now that point is stored as a piece of data inside this point component. So basically now I'm going to show you how that data can be translated into an action or perform, be perf, have an action performed on it. So this circle is going to create a circle from that point. Now before I go into that, I'm going to go ahead and explain a little bit about the parts of this uh, component uh, piece here. If, if we look on the left hand side, we've got these three little knobs here, which are called grips. And that is basically how things connect in Grasshopper. So if I want to take a piece of data and move it into this action, I basically just hover over this grip and pull the wire into this grip and the data becomes transferred through this wire okay so now 
What do these letters mean? These letters, if you hover over them, they'll tell you exactly what kind of data they're looking for. So I knew to plug the point into the C of this circle because it says when I hover over it that it's the center point. So it's looking for a point piece of data to define a circle. And you can see over here in the Rhino uh, viewport the circle that's created around that point. Also it's, it has other uh, things here. We're not going to get into that right now. Later on you'll understand this very easily I'm sure. So right now don't worry if it confuses you a little bit. I'm just trying to get you kind of familiarized with with how you can understand these components a little bit and how parameters and components work to, in conjunction. If you hover over the middle of the component it basically just tells you what the component is. So it says circle CNR and if you read down below it has a little explanation. It says create a circle defined by center, normal, and radius. So I mean it's pretty obvious this component creates a circle defined by a center, a normal, and a radius. And as you can see right here, it asks for C, N, and R, and that's the center, the normal, and the radius. So you can get data in any way through a multitude of ways that Grasshopper allows you, and then plug that data in to these options and define a circle however you would like. This, <coughs> this letter over here is basically the output data. So it's going to tell you exactly what is the final result of the data when the action is performed on it. So you can see if you hover over it, it says resulting circle and it says one locally defined value and it tells the radius is one millimeter. So, which is basically a default value which you can change by simply plugging in data into this R. So, now I'm gonna show you a little bit about uh, the different um, I guess statuses of parameters and components as they exist on the canvas. Now, I don't. You probably don't understand what that. How I just explained it, but I'm just going to go ahead and show it to you so uh, it'll be easier to understand. I'm going to go ahead and uh, delete this point in Rhino, and it takes the data away from that. And I'm going to go and disconnect this. So basically, I deleted the point in Rhino. So now there is no data stored in this point component. It's an empty parameter. And now the circle component is not it does not have any data flowing into it, so it's considered to be empty as well. So when it's as you can see it turns orange and it comes up with a little message box and it says input parameter C failed to collect data, which means the 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 one thing that this circle needs at least primitively to create itself is one piece of data but it doesn't have anything so it's orange obviously it's not gonna work this data is empty so it's orange it says object has no point ID failed to load okay so I think that's pretty easy to understand anyways if in if any of this seems complicated at first don't worry about it later on it'll it'll come to you very very easily so I'm gonna show you another warning as well and this is the red warning um, let me go ahead and disconnect that. So instead of plugging a point into the center of the circle, I'm going to try to s plug a curve into it and show you that you cannot define a circle by a curve and therefore it will give you a, war a warning message. I'm going to go ahead and pull a curve here, set one curve. If I plug that into the center, the component turns red, meaning that is not a a piece of data that you can use. Something is messed up. Obviously, everybody knows red means something bad's going on, so I think that's pretty easy to understand. But just know that if, if it turns red, there's something wrong with the data that you're trying to input. Um, sometimes components can work when they're turned red, but they might, they're not working optimally. So, and it will tell you obviously in the message exactly what's going on. Um, I'm going to go ahead and run over sliders real quick and then we'll go over more stuff in the following tutorials to just finish off kind of the basics in the interface um, tutorial parts. Um, we're going to go ahead and double click, type in slider and basically this is a parameter as well but it's it's a manipulatable parameter. It's a, it's a 
numerical value that can be manipulated by the user just by sliding it up and down. Okay. Now if I double click on the slider, it brings this dialog box and I can edit how the value is treated in Grasshopper. How it how accurate it is, how large it is, the minimum and maximum values that I can go. So basically right here we've got a name. I can change the name of the slider. We've got slider accuracy which basically changes the number of decimal points and you can also make it only go to even numbers or odd numbers. So if I have the R which means floating point selected I can move this icon left and right to change the number of decimal places which effectively changes the accuracy of the slider. Also let's move on to the integer uh, if you've taken any math classes, you know what an integer is. It's any real number, positive or negative. So, for example, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, etc., etc., and negative 1, 2, 3, 4, etc., etc. So, no decimal places, but positive and negative numbers. And just a real quick, even and odd numbers, I think you understand that. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and push OK. Now, this will only go to even numbers. So, that's pretty easy to understand I think down here is basically the minimum and maximum values and the range between the values so if I go ahead and put in a negative five here commit changes let me try that again negative five here okay and then I go ahead and put in a six here I'm not sure why that, oh, it's because I have even numbers on, so it won't let me. So I've got to go back to integer and do negative 5. Commit. Okay. So you can see here that it's negative 5 to positive 6. And the range is 11 because that's how many steps are in between these two numbers. Um, also, you have the numeric value down here, which you can plug in the existing value. So if I put in three and commit hit OK I have a three here so now I have a negative five as a minimum value and a six as a maximum value so I'm gonna go ahead and end this tutorial right here but first before I end it I wanna say uh, do not get intimidated by this this program it's really not that hard at all a lot of people I know I was intimidated at first but I mean I spent some time on it and now it's become my favorite program and I know it's my, a lot of my friends favorite program and once you get past this boring initial phase it becomes just a lot of fun um, so again just keep that in mind uh, really if you put the effort and time into it this can be a great tool for architecture students so with that I'm just gonna go ahead and end this and uh, thanks for watching